Welcome to St. Stephen Lutheran Church in Williamsburg, Virginia on this first Sunday in Lent. On our website, you will find a link to our order of worship for this day. For those of you who have hymnals at home, we will be announcing page numbers and hymn numbers during our centering music. We invite you into God's presence. We continue our walk with God this morning using our words of confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the keeper of the covenant, the source of steadfast love, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. God hears us when we cry and draws us close in Jesus Christ. Let us return to the one who is full of compassion. Fountain of living water, pour out your mercy over us. Our sin is heavy, and we long to be free. Rebuild what we have ruined, and mend what we have torn. Wash us in your cleansing flood. Make us alive in the Spirit to follow in the way of Jesus as healers and restorers of the world you so love. Amen. Beloved, God's word never fails. The promise rests on grace. By the saving love of Jesus Christ, the wisdom and power of God, your sins are forgiven. God remembers them no more. Journey in the way of Jesus. Amen. Our gathering hymn, hymn 326, Bless now, O God, the journey.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Our service continues with the Kyrie, which can be found on page 156 in the front part of the heel. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Oh. Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We'll now have our readings. A reading from Genesis. God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you, that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of the flood. And never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, This is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all generations. I have set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you, and every living creature of all flesh, and the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Thank you. 
to shame. Rather let those be put to shame who are treacherous. Show me your ways, O oh Lord, and teach me your paths. Drove him out into the wilderness, 
He was in the wilderness 40 days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace from God our Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you this day. The writer of the Gospel of Mark could have written for Reader's Digest. The writing is condensed and there are no unnecessary words. Mark's Gospel story moves quickly. Immediately is a frequently used word. In the space of only seven verses. Jesus is baptized by John, the heavens are torn apart, and the Holy Spirit, God, claims Jesus as his beloved son. <sighs> then that same spirit drives Jesus into the wilderness. He's tempted by Satan, existed with the wild beasts, and waited on by angels. <sighs> John was arrested. Jesus went to Galilee, and there began his preaching career. Phew. We hear all these things on this Sunday, the first Sunday after we have been marked on our foreheads with sooty ashen cross. This first Sunday in Lent, after we have just heard that we are dust and will return to dust, we are reminded not only of our mortality, but also how quickly our lives pass. In this year of the pandemic, the paradox of time hits us hard. Life goes so fast, but our years, especially this one, feel as if they're passing slowly. These past 11 months, have been the equivalent of five years, at least for me. With awareness of our mortality heightened, we continue our days trying to avoid COVID's grip. At best, we miss hugging each other. At worst, we are denied the opportunity of saying goodbye to loved ones who have died. Our reading today seems to affirm our tumultuous times. In Mark's Gospel, the heavens were not simply open, they were torn apart. The ripped and ragged edges that free the way between heaven and earth convey an honest rawness of our view between God and us. At times, our faith and trust seems like it's unraveling. It feels like we are in the wilderness with the beasts, unsure of God's presence with us. Mark's quick version of this part of Jesus's life provides few details of his days in the wilderness. We are told that he was there for 40 days. Satan and the wild beasts were there too. Mark says simply that Satan tempted Jesus. Mark doesn't tell us what Jesus endured and what he overcame. Somehow though, I doubt that Satan tempted Jesus as he does us, with Lindor truffles, dark chocolate ones, or the bars with gooey caramel inside and sea salt. At the end of his 40 days of temptation and being with the wild beasts, angels wait on Jesus. Barely recovered from his traumatic experiences, the one who baptized him was arrested. So what did Jesus do next? He proclaimed the good news of God. 
The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Jesus was God's beloved child, and that informed how he experienced Satan and the angels and all that came with his humanity. Jesus' response was not based on the bad things that happened to him, but rather on God's love and God's presence with him through it. Jesus proclaims the inbreaking of the kingdom in which God brings new realities into existence. Life and the world are going to change. In light of the kingdom of God coming near, what are we to do? Jesus tells us how to respond. Repent and believe in the good news. The word in Greek used in Mark's gospel for repent is metanoite. For you language aficionados, this form of the verb is plural, present tense, active voice, and imperative. In other words, repenting is a recurring urgency. It's also an invitation, an imperative one, to move toward this new reality of God's kingdom. We can find a new way to live that is literally a breath of fresh air, writes one scholar. The good news in which Jesus calls us to believe is an invitation to trust in a future made possible by the grace of God. Lent reminds us that God invites us to start again and live differently. That's the good news about repentance. It calls us to change. The bad news about repentance is it calls us to change. God's Wise planning has Ash Wednesday and Lent come every year for good reason. In a respectable year, we take two steps forward and one back. We are comfortable with how life was and we fall back into our egocentric ways. We fall prey to temptation. We are lulled into the sense that we can handle the wilderness by ourselves without help. Maybe the worst temptation for us is to think that God is not present with us. To be human is to be sinful. Our Lenten journey will lead us to Jesus' death on the cross. Remember, God calls us forward. Three days later, the tomb was empty. See, in Jesus, God is on the loose in our world. The resurrection brings new life and defeats the power of sin and death. During these 40 days, remember that we are joined to Christ in his suffering, death, and resurrection. The ashen cross imposed on our foreheads on Ash Wednesday is undergirded by the cross placed on our foreheads in our baptism. Before we realize we are sinners, God calls us God's beloved child. Our days, our lives, and our world are not yet as God intends, but God's kingdom is breaking in. God calls us forward, not just into it, but as part of it. Metano aite and trust, repent and believe. In the name of Christ, giver of all grace, amen. Our hymn of the day is hymn 613, Thy Holy Wings. Thank you. 
We join now together in our statement of faith. God, the source of our being and the goal of all our longing, we believe and trust in you. The whole earth is alive with your glory, and all that has life is sustained by you. Help us to commit ourselves to cherish your world and to seek your face. God, embodied in a human life, we believe and trust in you. Jesus, our brother, born of the woman Mary, you confronted the proud and the powerful and welcomed as your friends those of no account. Holy wisdom of God, firstborn of creation, you emptied yourself of power and became foolishness for our sake. You labored with us upon the cross, and have brought us forth to the hope of the resurrection. Help us to commit ourselves to the struggle against evil and to choose life. God, life-giving Spirit, Spirit of healing and comfort, of integrity and truth, we believe and trust in you. Warm-winged Spirit, brooding over creation, Rushing wind and Pentecostal fire, help us to commit ourselves to work with you and renew our world. Beloved friends, in this season of repentance and healing, we accept God's invitation to be ever mindful of the needs of others, offering our prayers on behalf of God's community in the church and in the world. Lead the church to repentance, O God. Where it is in error, bring about reformation. Lord, in your mercy, in hear our prayer. prayer. Lead us to repentance, O God, for being poor stewards of the earth, and make us ever more mindful of the ways in which we harm your creation, and move us to be better stewards of all that you have made. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lead the nations to repentance, O God. Reform our corrupt systems of power and bring equality and equity to all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lead us to repentance, O God, when we do not reach out in love and kindness to those in need. And grant us the strength, wisdom, and courage to live out your gospel good news. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bring our broken systems of healing to repentance, O God and help us to better care for all who suffer in any way. Especially, we pray, for Brian, Joe, Kristen, Julie, Jack, Linda, Evelyn, Ned, Linda, John, Carol, David, and those others we name now out loud or in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lead this congregation to repentance, O God, and help us to see our own sins more clearly, to see the sins of others less clearly, and to pursue reconciliation whenever we can. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. You have led saints and sinners of all times to repentance, O God. And we pray that by your mercy, you will bring us all to our heavenly home. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Fill us with your strength to resist the seductions of our foolish desires and the tempter's vain delights, that we may walk in obedience and righteousness, rejoicing in you with an upright heart. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. As we have our offertory music, I would invite you to reflect upon the many ways in which God has blessed you and how you might be called to be a blessing to others.
Our service continues with the Lord's Prayer, which can be found on page 112. Gathered into one by the power of the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. God, the Creator, strengthen you. Jesus, the Beloved, fill you. And the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, keep you in peace. Amen. Our sending hymn is hymn 319, O Lord, throughout these 40 days. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.